at the end you don't touch the core message and you can change it just to have the, the movie at the end. No? Uh, so that, that's the whole point. Uh, they were trying to get the money, there was not enough money, so they still want to have a film, so let's change some things without compromising the main, the main uh, message. No? Uh, that's, that's the whole point. If they would say no, because the script, the script writer, for example, I, I read the script, the, the script is in Spanish, uh, and uh, it starts with black screen, the, the, <laughs> the script, and it says, we hear jungle noises, no noises of animals that doesn't exist, like flying snakes or uh, baboons with with a, with, a, with a no hair. And th it sounds you won't see that, but that's how he wrote it. And I ask uh, the director why he wrote it like that. I mean, because you really have to write it so artistically the script. I said yes because you want to sell it. You want somebody to be interested in the script to uh, do the story. So that also is part of the selling, the story. You write it nice, it's, oh, you fall in love with the script, even though you are not going to show those words, uh, on the, unless it's the voiceover itself, but all the rest, the description is just a technical description, actually. Nobody will see it at the end, but it's for the, the producers and, and the director also to get interest in the, in the script. So you see, to that level, you have all these elements that are, uh, are helping you to, to make the idea come true. See? Uh, and yes, sacrifices until a certain point, of course. Uh, there is a commercial, actually, it's very funny. There's a commercial that uh, came out uh, a bit after that short movie that touches the same topic. And for us, it's like another way of saying more or less the same. So I wanted to show it to you. It's a short version. Yeah. There's a longer version that they are actually floating on the restaurant. So, and actually, the, the director, I showed this to the director. He told me, oh, give me their number because this was very popular. This short movie was very popular in France. So, so maybe they got the inspiration for the ad. So he wrote to them, but they never answered. So they had a, but yes, yeah, it's, because it's, it's very, it's a very similar um, uh, topic. No, it's, it's almost the same. It's, it's first kiss, or well, not first kiss in your life, but first kiss with somebody. So it's a different story, but the, the effect mm -hmm. is the same. You want to say how dramatic is that little move, and actually, mm -hmm. you don't. Uh, I mean, you dramatize yeah. the the distance and this this jump. Mm -hmm. Literally, you take it to the extreme. You, it's not like you're telling another very believable story like they did in the voiceover. So uh, initially, this line was message versus conclusion. Uh, then uh, we discussed long until uh, like until like three in the morning. Until we yeah. didn't remember what we were discussing. We came back that when we uh, when we talk or work on mm. advertising. But since this is, we are on the border now, on the fence, we're talking to you who are not into advertising, so, so it's like, oh, maybe, maybe we shouldn't say that because uh, you won't get it. It's too advertising-y. Maybe the story in effect yeah. should be um, more, more explained than you, differently. Yeah. But so, w the point is, it's not the same. In advertising, we have to say that to, to the client a lot of the times. Because you see, my message is this, because I want people to know that. I say, or whatever. I'm, I don't know, let's say, um, what? What could it be? Um, I have very high uh, cleanliness standards in my uh, food facility, where I prepare my, whatever, salad. I'm very clean, uh, very high standards, very clean. So I, you want to say that, so, okay, you want people to know that. It doesn't mean that you have to say exactly that. You can say something that will allow people to jump to a conclusion of that. You mm -hmm. can maybe say, I don't know, maybe uh, say that uh, you could do a heart surgery 
in that facility that would be fine with all the requirements that the uh, heart uh, surgery has because the standard is so high. Well, you don't even have to say that. It's just the conclusion will be that. Um, it's, <laughs> there's this joke. It's Imagine the client would say, I want to look funny, or I want to look that. Well, tell the joke. Don't say, hey, I'm funny. And there was an older way of saying that. that it's, yeah, tell, tell me about the moon, about something, about the effect. I will discover it myself. It will be nicer. Sometimes when I do uh, this example for students in big auditoriums, I say, imagine, because this message and conclusion, when you mix it, you may... Uh, communicate something not in the most effective way and in advertising we are obsessed with uh, effective communication we want to be effective so effective in a way that it touches you you feel it you f you uh, I don't know you cry you laugh you hate you stand up you throw things you do something it touches you right or it stays in your memory and you can tell somebody about it so um, let's say um, I, I would would like you to get out of this uh, room as fast as possible, right? Uh, I could say that directly. Okay, guys, fuck <laughs> off. You're looking at your computer, not listening, get the fuck out of here now. Mm -hmm. See, nothing happens. It's ineffective. I just said what I wanted. <laughs> but if I cried as hell that, is, that if there's a fire or something, maybe you would get out. Okay, I can't lie. There's a there's a rule, but just to make an example, make a point. Oh, maybe actually make the fire. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that would be effective. Yeah, I don't smoke. I don't have a lighter. Yeah, make the fire and that's it. The the point is sometimes saying something else and letting the person to jump to its own conclusions will make the communication stronger and more effective. Mm -hmm. The per person will be touched on a deeper level. And with adverti uh, advertising clients, we have this discussion all the time. So you're like, come on, when you put, you know, uh, cheese into the trap, leave some room for the mouse. I mean, let the person, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wiggle around there. So say, oh, oh, I understood it. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. So, the story. The story is different, it's important, and uh, we always think that we have something to say. The message. But do we? We didn't have a story when we were filming this uh, unscrewing of the... <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure a lot of people unscrew <laughs> corks before without a corkscrew. I mean, sometimes, yeah, sometimes the, 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 the core message may be very similar or very, uh, or actually even the same than uh, some other uh, story, for example. Uh, then you work in how to say it, or which pers new perspective you find from the same core message, so it looks different and it has a different angle. No? I think that's what, it, <laughs> what you want to say. Mm, yes. The thing is, uh, Advertisers, artists, I think sometimes they, they feel it and they think, yeah, of course I have a message. What, what is your message? You're doing a film. What is your film? What's the main idea of your film? And they start telling you the plot or something. Mm. They can't tell you the idea. They don't, they can't verbalize it clearly. They don't have the core message. They clear for themselves, right? Mm -hmm. And so they, what they do have, a topic that uh, they feel something for a specific topic. Maybe it's patriotism and how mm -hmm. it's uh, viewed in different generations. Maybe it's uh, gay and lesbian rights and marriages or whatever. It can be anything. I so say, I feel strongly about it. I have a stance. But do I have anything new to say about it? What do I say about it? Mm -hmm. Yes, I don't know. As an example, I mean, this new to say about it. I remember an ad that I couldn't find. I spent like half an hour yesterday googling it, different keyword combination. I couldn't find. There was an old social ad about dog poop done, I think, if I'm not mistaken, in Prague by some Czech uh, uh, ad agency. Well, everybody agrees that yes, it's not nice when you walk around in the park and there's dog poo and somebody just didn't pick it up. Or you walk down the street and on the sidewalk and you step mm -hmm. into something, I mean, it's, yeah, it's bad. 
you shouldn't do that? Yes. You can't just say that. It's, I mean, it's said many times. It wasn't effective. Why should it be now? How do you make it new, interesting, relevant, and touch the nerve somehow? That ad touches the nerve in a way. Uh, the, the ad that I couldn't find <laughs> from the first side. Uh, in the ad, you had small handmade toys, like if you take a chestnut and connect it with some, I don't know, uh, matches one another and you make a nice little doggy or an animal, you put some a, a leaf from the tree or something. It's just uh, some handicrafted uh, little toys by kids. But when you look closer, there was a necklace and one, there was a, se it was a series of posters. When you look closer, it's made out of dog poo and other materials. And it said, pick it up before your kids do. Mm -hmm. Say, ah, f yeah, I, I wouldn't like my kids to just play in, in, the, in the park and on the grass and then, oh, what's that? Something interesting, some building material. <laughs> mm -hmm. Build a nice dog and play, oh, what's that? That's, that's piece of mm -hmm. pool. Conclusion and the message, I think you, you risk less when you're not in advertising. You probably mm -hmm. won't be that explicit as our clients want us to be sometimes. Uh, but having or not having a story, having or not having anything new to say, I think uh, you might uh, trip over that kind of banana peel or you know, get, get into that kind of trap. Because in advertising, uh, in most uh, of agencies, I don't know, we have a, we're obsessed with originality. We, uh, we can't do an idea if it's done. We have a very good idea, it's awesome. Uh, you, you want to present it to the client, somebody comes and says, nah, it's 10 years ago in another part of the world, somebody did something like that, and you say, yeah, something very similar. I can't do it. <laughs> like, oh, okay, I can't the do it anymore. <laughs> the people who would see the ad wouldn't know, it would work, and you don't do it. It sounds mm -hmm. even like egoistic, like, <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's just vanity, you know, but, but we're obsessed with that because, yeah, we won't be able to, it's a good idea and you won't be able to send it to a festival. It won't be judged because the judges will remember, point it out and say, look, it's a copy. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah, like, and there's, there's also another point that they, they pay us to be creatives. And if you're going to grab other ads that already exist from the past and use them here, then they don't need me. They just need to go straight to the other ads, check what works and do it. This commercial yeah. is like a copy of this short film. I mean, Which one? Ah, the commercial. Yeah. That's the point. In advertising, mm -hmm. they don't care if they are, it's not a copy, it's a reinterpretation, but they don't care if, for example, sometimes they grab a piece of material and they put the logo and they put a copy at the end that gives a different perspective. But it's the same. Sometimes they do that. Uh, somehow in advertising, the important thing is not to copy other ads. Oh, and if, ads. yeah, that's and if you, if you yeah. had a film and you made another film, that's one thing. If you had a film but you made a slightly, slightly twisted book or a play or a, uh, I don't know, a sculpture, mm -hmm. so it's fine. Yeah, you changed it's it. A little bit like DJs. <laughs> you see, <laughs> you can grab another a song and you put it in another context, and that, that's my mix. No, it's something like that. I remember this ad of, uh, of uh, um, a, a fast edit of uh, back seats of different cars of uh, horror movies. And from the back seat comes the guy who is going to kill you. And ah, one, two, three, four, five, seven. And then it was uh, advertising, I think, smart. Mm -hmm. The car that doesn't have a back seat. It's like, <laughs> like just to play it. Back seats are bad. Go smart. Uh, yeah, then you can say, yeah, but all those movies were, they, they didn't film anything. They just put pieces of other movies and, but you find another angle, you see, you, that becomes the originality of it. Uh, there are several, several examples. You see, actually there's a better one with the armchair. There was, uh, somebody did a project of putting a, a weather balloon. Uh, putting a, an armchair or a chair and a weather balloon and sending it up to the sky with cameras to see what happens. And it went up, up, up until you all, you see the, the, the earth already, the curved earth, and it explodes and falls down. Uh, somebody grabbed uh, that idea, some agency, and grabbed an armchair, you know, where you sit to watch TV. 
and then uh, they put it exactly the same, the balloon with the cameras and left it to the, to the sky and it, until it appears showing the earth and the, the armchair, you know, there. And it says another perspective no? uh, from the armchair or an ar armchair perspective for Panasonic, uh, Panasonic was, I think, and TVs. No, so you, it's like, it's another experience from, from the armchair. Oh, so, so they reinterpret the same material and that, that's the point. So in this case, for example, Lacoste is life is a beautiful sport. And that's something that doesn't, that wasn't in, a, in, the, in the short movie. You see, so that's how they, they say, look, I'm reinterpreting it. So it's not a copy. Hmm. So yep. Yep. Yeah. We, we can go fast now. Ah, um, washing dishes. Who, who was saying about the washing dishes? You were saying about washing dishes. That the washing dishes is... Uh, it's like meditation, yeah. Ah, OK. This, this is a... Tengo razón o no tengo razón? Me da un poco de culpa. Pero la verdad es que no quiero que sea el tatuaje de Susana. Entiendo que es su mamá, pero es mi marido. Va a estar siempre ahí, en el medio de los dos. Mirándome, juzgándome. El flequillo ya pasó de moda, querida. No sé si lo voy a poder soportar. Pero espera. Marcos tiene pelos en el pecho. No lo pensó. Chao, Susana. Nos vemos el domingo en tu casa. <laughs> Is that? <laughs> sí. Déjame una campaña, ¿verdad? I don't know if we have it here. Sí, we just put one, ¿no? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we just put one, but that's the thing. In advertising, you have sometimes the same, the same message. Mm -hmm. Say you're, we, we were working with a telco client, Omnitel, prepaid, postpaid, doesn't matter. And they, they come out like every second month and say, okay, I have a tariff plan to communicate uh, this and that amount of cents per minute or something like that. Mm -hmm. Zero, one, two, three, whatever. Uh, so it's cheap, so we can talk more. So what's, what's the benefit? What do you say to be able to talk more? But then at some point, just talk more, you say, okay, but why talk more? You need to find another angle and another angle, and then it becomes layered a little bit further away from the, uh, from the actual uh, offer. And I remember the, the best way the strategic planner found an angle to it was, well, there's two sides to every story. So he found a funny story, just like this therapeutical, for example, and this is specific therapy. There was another in a series about uh, a guy who is touched too much by his boss at work and he worries about that. Is it, is it sexual harassment or not? Oh, whatever. This is a funny topic. This is about it too. So there, you, with that kind of angle, you can make many funny stories where you have one side and a second side of it. To be able to tell them both, you need time. That's why mm -hmm. a cheap tariff. <laughs> You have these layers and say, oh, okay. Now I found another angle how to make the same thing relevant. An interesting mm -hmm. way to approach it. Mm -hmm. But the thing I'm communicating, it's the same. Mm -hmm. Now we go to the production part. So, the main goal is just the, the core message. And it's your boss. And yeah, but that's very important, actually. Uh, when you get into the production part, a lot of people get in. I mean, you have your project, you can with your baby, and then suddenly a lot of people are in. Everybody putting their hands in. So if you are supervising it and you are the one who takes care of the project, you need to know what you can let them do because it will be better. Uh, and what you shouldn't let them do. And that's the whole point through the whole uh, process uh, of production. Because it's tricky. Mm -hmm. If you don't let people touch it, they won't have the motivation, they won't enhance it, enhance again. Yeah. Uh, they won't make your project better, your film, your whatever you're mm -hmm. doing. Because, well, 
you're, you're just yeah. a screenwriter, for example. You're not a director, you're not a DOP. And mm -hmm. if you don't give them freedom, you say, no, 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 I'm very protected. Don't change anything. I see it like that. I want it to be filmed like that, nothing mm -hmm. else. Uh, it, it won't be uh, put up to, I don't know, a next level, lifted up. Mm. If you give a total freedom, they will interpret it differently and they will divert from the core message. They will mm -hmm. lose the track. They will say, I want to do this because I think it's fine. I want to use these lenses when filming this because I, I, I see it, uh, uh, it's, it's pressure. Nobody did that before. Yeah, but does that help? Yeah. To communicate the core message is that, or is that, is that compatible at all That's with what yeah. my goal was? And sometimes you have directors that have their own hidden core message, and they want to sneak put it into your movie, like just because they are they wanted to always, they wanted to always. <laughs> so happens a lot. See it from above, but you don't need to see it from above. No, no, no. Mm. There's a helicopter flying. It's, it's okay. We'll squeeze it into the budget. Yeah. yeah okay. But you don't need it. Yeah, there was an, an Argentinian um, creative that was saying that there was always a, a director that want, wanted to put the the old the old lady with the umbrella of uh, of uh, Rhapsody in August <laughs> all the time in everything he was doing. He wanted to sneak her in somehow. And they would have to stop the old lady to come into the set because he was going to just yeah, because the director wanted to put her there somehow for some weird reason. Uh, but that's signature. <laughs> that's in one in one side. You should not let others destroy your core message but in the other side you should not let yourself destroy the whole project so that's why uh, how to find some balance there uh, you are not the boss the core message is your boss and you have uh, it's very common these people who have their own story and say I, w I wrote it I will direct it and I want to act on it say so maybe the you know your project is asking for somebody else to act in or some director that is because okay you are also a director but maybe it's ask for a director that has another style uh, will be better no so you have to start thinking about about that also and that's very tricky so you have to be really cold minded to minded to let other handle the project and also to be good enough to stop other people when they have to stop so that's the middle point that you have to always find in every project during the whole long process of production pre-production production so all of this rant before mm -hmm. this moment about the details the story the core message and, and and so on is just to tell you like look when you will be supervising or taking decisions yourself or letting other people's change something or not, <coughs> you have to know, is it because uh, you just, out of principle, don't want anything to be changed because it's your baby, or because uh, it changes the concept, it changes the message, it changes the essence. Mm -hmm. So then you can explain, look, you can do this, but you mm -hmm. cannot do that because of this and this and that. And people won't be as mad at you, they won't think, oh, fucking artist. <laughs> I mean, yeah. so such a pain in the ass to deal with them. I mean, yeah. and there, there are a lot of decisions that you have to take there that are to go even farther from from there. For example, you have a set amount of money, and you know that if you can pay a bit more, you will get a better director that will be perfect for this. So, how to get a bit more if you don't have more money? Well, maybe you change the story a little bit that makes it cheaper so you can get this director but without sacrificing the core message without putting down the quality maybe just a different angle and works so these are the little details that are that help you to uh, to, to get more better people to sell the story better etc etc you see well, for so. example in the voiceover in that film initially even in the dossier uh -huh. they have they wanted somehow to each in each situation you have a different actor. Main actor is a different person. In this final film, it's the same person. It doesn't change the essence, mm -hmm. the message. It's the same. But uh, they were thinking like really talented, big name actors. And if they had to hire all of them, they would, wouldn't be able yeah. to do something else. Maybe they wouldn't have enough money to film underwater or something like that. So. Mm -hmm. Yep. It makes much more sense having the same actor. Yeah, I mean, it, actually, I think the same. But uh, there are some people, for example, some some uh, writer who, or or some I don't know producers or that they just fell in love with the fell in love with the 
the whole situation. They said, no, 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 don't touch my, my script. I want three actors because I want them. Plus, they uh, have a name. <laughs> yeah, and they have a name. No, they imagine this. Want, they have a kind of yeah. fetish. I want to work with that actor. That. Yeah, yeah. I want to have his name. On and, my maybe, and maybe the actor is not the best for the project either. So it's, but yeah, I mean, that, that's the point. When to be stubborn, when not. Yeah, that's, that's the whole point.